In this tutorial, I'm going to briefly cover the topic of exporting animation and characters into Ogre from Maya using the LFA Scene Manager. So what are some best practices for getting characters out of Maya and into Ogre? The first thing I might recommend is that if you only need to translate, rotate, or scale something, or track some movement, I recommend to ignore this tutorial and export the mesh as I showed in the other tutorials about dot scene and handle the movement in code. However, if you need to do anything more than simple translations, you're going to have to rig up the geometry with a skeleton and export the complex movement as animations. Now, I'm going to skip a lot of details about rigging in Maya because there's tons of resources on the internet about this but I'll cover some basics and specifics related to Ogre. So before I get started, I want to mention some things in case there are artists watching who are from non-game or non-real-time 3D backgrounds. An important basic thing to know is that no complex rigging or shape deformers will export. In other words, everything in here, none of this is going to export. No wrap deformers or clusters or jiggle, none of that stuff exports. Most of that stuff can't be calculated fast enough to run in real time anyway, so there's no point exporting it. No broken rigging techniques are going to export, there's no exporting IK handles or IK animation. So really there's only two animatable things that export. The first is meshes that are bound to 4K skeletons and the direct transformation of those skeletons. And the second is blend shape animations. Vertex animation is supported in Ogre but I don't support them in the LFA tools for various reasons. So at the end of the day only FK animation and blend shapes. And by the way this is generally the case for most 3D engine exporters too. And there are workarounds but I'll get to those later. So for now let's export out a simple character. So here I have this little rock guy. Let's smooth bind him to the skeleton. because remember rigid bind doesn't export. So let's see if I try to deform him you'll see that these deformations aren't very rock like. So if he was made out of skin you can go in the paint weights tool and adjust this. However this is different we want each section to match a hundred percent the motion of the joints. For example this should match exactly this. The solution to this is to use the component editor you can find that in Window, General Editors, Component Editor. So the first thing we want to do is go to the Smooth Skin tabs and select all the verts in one of the sections of the of the rock character. And this would be pretty applicable to like a robot too. And by the way, even when I'm editing a regular skin that's meant to smoothly deform, I often prefer this tool to the paint weights just because it's so direct. Every influence to each vert is shown here as a percentage between 0 and 1 and at the end you have a total which always equals 1 and see here are all the joints in the skeleton per each selected vert so after I've selected all the verts I gotta know the name of the joint that I that I wanna get and this is joint 6 so I'm gonna just go to joint 6 here and get all the verts that I've selected and set them all to 100% so I press 1 and that's it now they're all fully bound to, to this joint. So now I'm going to fast forward as I do it to the rest of the character. Done. So now when I move stuff around, it moves like rocks. So you can see how this technique would be relevant to making a robot or things made of separate objects. And now I'm going to add some animations to him. So I put a jumping jack and a wave. So how do I export this? Easy. I put launch animation manager. So I stop the animation. I select his root node and add two clips. In here we describe the limits of the animation. I can press S at any time to set that animation to the current time or press U to update this with the current time. And here I'll call it jump jack and wave. Let me set the time. So I update it here and here and export. 
But let's see how it turned out. If I open him up, what's this? Like, now when I load him up, he seems to be rotated relative to the world. I mean, his animations will be there, just as I did them. But what happened here? This is because when I rigged him, I didn't make sure that the root had clean transforms. This is basically the same problem I showed you how to fix when I moved the pivot on the revolver in the exporting tutorial. Now in this case you probably can't use my reset transforms to help you because in a real skeleton half the joints will be locked or rigged and this could be a serious problem. Obviously the best thing would have been to build it right the first place and to at least have checked this before adding animations but if you're stuck in this position here's how to fix it. There's two ways I can think of really. You can either parent your current root node to a new root node with no transforms and this is a hack but it might be the best way if you have a very complex rig or lots of animations that already depend on the existing transforms on this node here or you can fix it the proper way which I'll show you now is to fix the root node transforms. The first thing we have to do is unparent everything from the root node and zero out any rotations you had on it. If you have animations on it, you have to make them zero based or get rid of them. And the second thing we have to do is go into what was the child of the root and unlock the translates. If they have any keys or are locked, you have to break that. Then reparent it to the root and re export. And let's see how this loads the animations there we go 